right, welcome to episode one from chapter nine. And in chapter nine, we're going to cover a chemical process called cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is the process in which living things, specifically cells, release the energy found in glucose, and they convert that energy into ATP. All right, since we're talking about the energy found in food, first thing I wanted to cover is what is a calorie? A calorie is defined as the amount of energy it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius. Now, as you can see, this kind of calorie, oops, wrong button, this kind of calorie is referred to as a little c calorie, all right? And it does this right here, one gram of water, one degree Celsius. The type of calorie that you are used to seeing, often referred to as a food calorie, this is a big c calorie. And the big c calorie refers to the fact that it's a kilo calorie. And kilo is a prefix that means 1,000. So this is actually 1,000 of the little calories, and this is the amount of energy, energy it takes to raise one kilogram of water, one degree Celsius. One degree Celsius, all right? So that's what you're, you'll see these two different kinds of calories as you go through life, and the one that's found in food is this one in gray right down here, a big C calorie. All right, let's get rid of that, let's move on to cellular respiration. Now remember, cellular respiration is a chemical process which is used to release the energy found in glucose, which is right here, C6H12O6, and it will be converted into ATP, which is the energy molecule that transfers energy from one reaction to another. All right, if you want to learn more about ATP, go to our Chapter 8 series of screencasts. It's right at the beginning of that one. Now there's a three-step process in cellular respiration, glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, GKE for short. Now these guys occur in three different places. Glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm, and then the next two both occur in the mitochondria. The Krebs cycle occurs in the matrix, which is the very inside of the mitochondria, and the electron transport chain is going to occur on the inner membrane. And remember, the folds of the inner membrane are called cristae. Uh, we covered this in our Chapter 7 series of screencasts on uh, the mitochondria, where we went over the mitochondrion structure, okay? I do want you to remember that the electron transport chain is going to make most of the ATP. All right, so the electron transport chain is by far the most important of these three steps, but they're all three important. In fact, the things that are being made in Step 1 and in Step 2 are going to be used by the electron transport chain. All right, I've got a picture to show you all this stuff, but first I want to go over the overall equation for cellular respiration. And you're going to notice that some of these things you see in photosynthesis also. And in fact, these chemical reactions are the exact opposite of each other. So over here, we have the reactants. So anything left of the arrows of the reactants, and the arrow is always pointing at the products. Okay, before we get into the details, see where it says ATP right there? Cross that out and make it ADP. That's just a little mistake on this graphic. Okay, so our reactants of cellular respiration, those were the products of photosynthesis. So remember C6H12O6, that's glucose. And then oxygen, we're going to use all this oxygen we breathe in. It's going to be used in this step, and it's going to be able to make ATP. Now, the ADP and the ATP are not considered products or reactants because they are constantly being recycled uh, by your body. All right, now, here's your two waste products. Carbon dioxide that we breathe out. Luckily for us, the plants we use that. And water, which is part of the reason why we have to go to the bathroom occasionally. All right, now, remember, there was three steps in cellular respiration glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. There's step one, step two, and step three. Now over here it says cytosol. That's the liquid part of the cytoplasm. So for us, if we would just consider cytosol and cytoplasm the same thing, that's, that works for us, okay? You're gonna make a little bit of ATP in this step, and when you get to the Krebs cycle, remember the Krebs cycle occurs in the matrix. So you see all this spot over here on the inside? That's the matrix of the mitochondria. And then the electron transport chain, it's going to occur on this inner membrane. You can see the folds right here. There's another fold. 
these guys are the Christie. Remember, really what the Christie does is it increases the surface area so we can have lots and lots of electron transport chains because if you look at these starbursts down here, most of your ATP is made at the electron transport chains. Electron transport chain. So most ATP made by ETC, electron transport chain for short. All right. So make a note of this. Good chance that this will show up on a test or a quiz again. So make sure you know this graphic. Um, just want to remind you that if you're one of the subscribers on YouTube or you've come across this in YouTube search and you're looking for a series of screencasts that will give you the molecular details of all these steps, you have come to the wrong place. These screencasts are based upon the Indiana High School Standards for Biology and Indiana Standards on Photosynthesis and Cellular Respiration are not that detailed. So if you want an AP Biology level of information or an International Baccalaureate level of information or you'd like freshman college level information, you will not find that here. So I would suggest you search someplace on YouTube. Specifically, maybe you want to head over to Bozeman Biology's channel. That'd be a good place to start. But if you want a nice, concise, keep it simple overview of cellular respiration, you have come to the right place. Okay, so until our next episode, I'm going to catch you on the flip side.